What have you found is the best way to make money as a filmmaker? I think, you know, that's a, that's a tough question. I, it, you know, it's, it's really important that, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of people, I think, forget that, you know, filmmaking, it, you, you have to pay people for what they do because there's a, you know, there's a, the thing in LA that I've noticed a lot is people tend to use uh, exposure as currency. And I think that that <laughs> kind of becomes, you know, oh, well, you're going to get so much exposure if you do this for free and for free. And I think a lot of people try and get freebies from people. But I think making money as a, as a, as a filmmaker is something that I don't think ever gets easier. Um, I think, you know, you all, I always have to take side jobs, um, you know, editing jobs or jobs on set um, and stuff like that. Or for example, you know, I've worked in a rental house and, and, you know, whatever you can do that's going to pay your bills that gets you the closest to filmmaking and, and movie making is, is, is just as important. Without naming names, are you able to share one of your worst jobs? You don't. You don't have to say, of course, where it is. We'd rather you not. But it, just what you, yeah. <laughs> what the duties were, and what I. Happened. You know, I've I've had a lot of bad jobs. I worked um, <laughs> the director. I was friends with the actor, and the the actor knew that I was a director, and the director of that actual project was like this tyrannical, <laughs> sort of intense. You know, he would, I think he thought that shouting and yelling equaled, you know, direction and, and, and he was, get, we would get frustrated all the time and we were, we were traveling all over the country. And, uh, there was one experience where, uh, he, my friend who was the actor was trying to perform this scene and he wasn't quite getting it the way that the director wanted it. And he came up to me cause he knew I was a director and he said, what? Like, what are you, what do you think? And I was just there as a, as an AC. I wasn't, I was there pulling focus. I, I didn't want to get involved in any of that stuff, but he was a friend of mine. So I sat there <laughs> and I was like 20, I think at the time. So I was like, well, you know, I, you know, if you maybe do this or, you know, it might be more interesting if you try this or that. So he would try those things and the director would just get furious at him and was like, where are you getting this? Who is telling you all this information? You know, and he would point right at me and say, oh, Ryan, I was talking to Ryan earlier. And he would tell, and I'm just like, no, don't. <laughs> So I got I got yelled at in a trailer pretty intensely for a while about that. So there's I mean, there's been some really, really bad, you know, you, you work with a lot of people that that are, you know, that that have egos that don't seem warranted um, or necessary or even earned, to be honest. Um, so a lot of the sets that I've worked on have been, you know, are pretty difficult and, and can be very difficult. Um, but then, you know, you work on great sets with, with amazing people and you, you earn a lot of amazing friendships that way too. But I, uh, I still have some nightmares from that. <laughs> Do you think that coming from another state, there were some unspoken rules that you, it took a while to learn? You know, because I know other states, you know, even Northern California, there's a different way people approach people and just learning that, that unspoken culture. Yeah. It took some time. The culture of like filmmaking, of like film sets and stuff like that? Yeah. or in, And just being in LA and whether yeah, to pitch yeah. somebody a script that you see at, oh, well, at a restaurant or, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I, I think, you know, where I grew up, I was very isolated. Like I said, it was a very, very small town. Um, you know, I had one movie theater and, and one video rental spot. And so the culture in that town was very um, positive. Uh, it was very sort of like, you can do anything that you want to do and, and you can, you know, be anything that you want to be. And everybody was very supportive. So you had this sort of community. I think I was like one out of two people that wanted to make movies in that town. So there was this sort of culture of like, well, you're, you're the one guy that wants to do this. So everybody kind of, if we're doing, if we need something like that done, we go to you. So it was a lot, uh, sort of more community oriented and friendly, and then, you know, you moving out of L.A., it's, it's just there's just more people and there's more money and there's more uh, ideas. And there's just it's, it's so it's it's a completely different culture to the Pacific North, Northwest as far as just people go. Um, I've never lived in a place with so many people that has actually been so isolating. It's really interesting how isolating Los Angeles can be 
you know, you, you there's this the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, and you know, you have this sixty mile wide landscape of Los Angeles that is actually really beautiful, and you somehow feel just so alone when you move out here. You feel, at least I did in my experience, I felt so. Well, I'm by myself, and I got to figure out how to do this and 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 make it work. So, so in that regards, yeah, they're they're two very different cultures, and and it is a different culture film set wise too. I worked in a couple film sets up in up in Portland, and there is a there is a sort of a a different vibe, you know, being small fish, or I'm sorry, being big fish in a, in a smaller pond up north uh, tends to drive more egos, I think. Um, whereas in my experience down here. There's a lot of fish, but it's a huge pond. And uh, though there are very egotistical people, there are a lot of really, really good people who just want to continue to do what they love. So I had a very, very different experience on film sets down here versus, versus up there. How important is it for you to quit a day job so that you can put all your time into filmmaking? Or is that not something that's important to you? That's, yeah, I think, you know, I think it's really important. I think it's easy to get, you know, it's easy to get comfortable. Um, excuse me, especially in a job like a rental house. You know, it's very easy to sort of sit there and go, well, you know, I'm getting paid. I get to work with cameras. I get to do, for the most part, be around the things that I love and, and meet some really amazing people. But I think it's really, really important that if you can to just focus on what you love and really, really work really, really hard at it and put a lot of time into it. And, you know, I think a day job is great. You know, people, you, you, at the end of the day, we all have to pay bills and we all, have, you know, we have to live. So I don't think there should be any level of, of pride where you say, well, I'm not going to take this job. I'm better than that. Or I'm better than, this, I think that anything that's going to allow you to continue to do what you do, um, uh, hold on to that. Because for me, it was very much working at a rental house still allowed me to make movies and work on the weekends and, you know, meet people in the film industry and make really, really great connections with people. Um, but, you know, having not worked there now, being here full time and doing working on my company full time and our movie full time, it's the most rewarding uh, thing that I, I've ever done in my life so far. So it's 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 definitely important to not lose sight of of what you love. But you know I get it. It's you know you have to pay your bills and it's and it's tough and and sometimes people I know a lot of people work jobs that they don't want to work, and you know we've all been there so. Was it also helpful with the rental house that if something went wrong with the equipment, you could kind of file that away and say, okay, next time I need to, yeah, just, I remember this guy brought this back because this happened or. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the, when you work in a rental house, there are, you learn so much about the technology and, 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 you know, these things are, you know, the, it, it is a technical process and, and there are people there that are just these, you know, these gurus who know the ins and outs of every little thing. And, and I was very fortunate to be able to work under them and learn the ins and outs of, of tons of different camera systems. And, and as well as, you know, I, I grew up on film, so I learned a lot of the majority of my camera knowledge was film knowledge because I learned sort of that film was kind of the way to go. And, 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 and so that was my base understanding. So digital cameras was like this completely different world to me. Um, but having spent time there and working with them, you know, you do learn a lot. And, and so there was a lot of things where you go, well, you know, this camera doesn't really work that well in low light or this camera, you know, we had this problem with, with this specific lens that we were using. Let's try a different lens next time. And, and so there's a lot of trouble. It, it very much allows for, for troubleshooting and, and learning and, and educating, you know.